Praise the Lord, everybody. Psalms 107, 8, 9, it says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul. He filleth the hungry soul with goodness. This afternoon, can we praise the one who has been one who has done wonderful works for us? Can we praise the one who has come down to this that came down this earth to save us? Can we praise the one that has been a friend to us, that has sticked closer to a brother? Amen. Can we pray? Dear Lord Jesus, Lord, we praise you, Lord. We magnify you today. Lord, you never let us down. We praise you. We love you. We give you all the praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name. Sometimes we say, have a good week to each other, and that's too much commitment. So we say, have the week you have. So if you've had the week you've had, if it's good or it's bad, we're now here to praise the Lord. So let's focus our mind on lifting him up and worshiping him, putting everything aside and just praising him. Oh, we've come to praise him. Yes, we've come to praise him. We've come to praise him. Him and lift his holy name. We've come to praise him. Oh, we've come to praise him. We've come to praise him and lift his holy name. Oh, we've 
Jesus, we have come to this place to worship you, Jesus, and we praise your name, God. You are so worthy, Jesus, and we just exalt you right now. We lift you up, Jesus, right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and you are worthy of all of our praise. Hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Good. 
magnify you today. We love you today. We thank you that, Lord, you are still there for us. We worship you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us, God. That, Lord, nothing compares, nothing compares to the promise, Lord, that we have. Nothing compares, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love the beginning of that song when it says, my Jesus, my Savior. Right now, I just want you to just dwell on what your God has done for you, what God has led you to, what he has been with you through. So right now, I want you to just to thank God for everything he's done, everything he's been with, that he loves you, that he still cares for you, that he will never leave you nor forsake you, and that he is our Savior. He is our Redeemer, and through him, we are saved. Through him, we are free. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We 
worship you, Lord. We magnify you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for sacrificing yourself on that cross for us. Thank you, Jesus, that by your blood, Lord, we are our sins are free. That we are washed through your blood. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you today. We magnify you today, God. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for revival. We're going to pray for revival. Amen, that it is coming. It's, probably, it's already here. Maybe we just haven't seen it yet. So I want to pray for that God would open up our eyes to see the harvest. I understand what that, what that verse is saying about the laborers are few. Well, I want to be a willing laborer today. We'll pray for that. But I want to see God do it. What God sees compared to what I see through my human eyes is so different. I can look down that road probably right now and just see somebody busy, somebody just trying to get somewhere. But God can see what's going on in their heart, what's going on in their life, and he sees how much that they need him. I want to be able to see that. As a church, I want to be able to see that. So I want to pray for God to open up our eyes to the harvest today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to pray for the God's will to be done in this city, in this church, and what God wants to do. He wants to do whatever God wants to do in this church for the next months, next even days, whatever God wants to do. I want to pray for God's will to be done. Hallelujah. If you need prayer today, we just come up to the front. We will pray and anoint you and that you will be touched today. Hallelujah. If you have a need, you weren't able to give it to me, take it to God. He is there. He is listening. And he is will hear your prayer today. Hallelujah. So let's go to God in prayer right now. Lord, we worship you today. We thank you, Lord, that you're the one that sits on the throne. That, Lord, there is no one like you, Lord. There is no one beside you. For you are the only one true God that reigns. You're the only true God that is there. Hallelujah. We thank you for it today. We worship you. Oh, we praise you today. We ask you, Lord, right now. Oh, Lord, open up our eyes today, God. Oh, Lord, this world that is so lost, Lord, that everybody needs you, God. Oh, Lord, open up our eyes, Lord, to see the harvest, Lord, as you see them. To see the souls, Lord, as you see them, God. As we walk, Lord, through our daily lives, God, let us see souls around us. Let us see hungry souls, hungry people that need you, God. Oh, Lord, open up our eyes. Oh, Lord, open up our, our awareness, Lord, to hear your voice speaking to us, guiding us, helping us to witness to, to people, God. Oh, Lord, let us, Lord, see a, a revival in Salem. Let us see, Lord, the harvest come forth, God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Lord, let your will be done in this church, God. Let your will be done in this church this year, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we worship you today. We magnify you today. We thank you, Lord, for your touch. We thank you, Lord, for your presence that is here right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's, let's give God thanks right now. Let's praise him right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you today. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
I know what God is doing. The pathway will be absorbed in the more. And it's far too stimulus to get into the deep sleep. See, occupational and physical therapy will continue to be successful. But the physical strength will be more eager and more precise and more intense. So the right job will be done. Let's pray. before you, Lord. You see and you know all about this situation even more than this prayer request, God. Lord, you see this young young girl, God, Ariana, God, Tilbury, God, you see where she's at, God, and we're binding together, God, Lord, with her parents and with others around the world right now, God, that you would perform the miraculous, that you would do the impossible. God, there are five areas that we bring before you, God, and we're asking God, to bring victory. We're asking you to bring healing. We're asking you, God, Lord, God, to, to come through this darkness, God, Lord, and shed your light of blessing upon her right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, your blessing upon her. I pray your healing upon her. God, Lord, as individuals in this room right here are taking individual prayer requests known to you, bring them before you that you would hear them right now, God, in your name, God, that infections would be completely removed. God, Lord, that the things that she needs, God, would be absorbed into the body. God, Lord, that her kidney and heart would be healed, that her speech and physical therapy would be blessed by you, and that her right side, God, would regain strength. Lord, in your name we pray, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh, can you shout that out with me right now? In Jesus' name. One more time. In Jesus' name name. Oh, let's praise him right now. Let's thank him right now. We worship you. We magnify you. We exalt you. We bless your holy name. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name, Lord, we worship you. Oh, we praise you. Lord, as we intercede for this young lady right now. Oh, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. You are the healer. You are the miracle worker. And we praise you. And we exalt you. And we adore you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your holy name, oh Lord God Almighty. Blessed be your name. We worship you and praise you. Praise God. Amen. I feel the power of God in this place today. I, I feel the presence of God wonderfully in this place today. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Amen. This wonderful, sunshining afternoon in the greatest month of the year, February. Amen. a couple things that I want to handle real quick. I want to project to you today. If you have your phone with you and able to, to, to connect, you know, so I, I don't know anybody's phone that would even not connect anymore. I think everybody's phone does. I, um, I don't know anybody that just has a phone just for phoning. Amen. But uh, if you'll open it up, whatever here I am, I know, Pastor, you're taking a, a big step asking people to turn on their phone to the internet, but if you go to whatever, whatever uh, uh, search engine or server you have, turn to that, 
and you would type into that all one word, okay? It's going to be three words, but they're going to be all together. Salem, S-A-L-E-M, new, N-E-W, life, L-I-F-E. So it's Salem, new life, all one word, low caps, dot com. See what that comes up with. That's the church website. So it is up and dot com. Mm -hmm. It is up and running. Okay? Now, if you got my a phone like mine or whatever, you, now they call this the hamburger menu. And I, I had never heard of that, but that's what my job calls it. Okay? I don't know if that's a phrase or a terminology, but it's three lines, solid lines. You hit that, and that should come up with home. Then you hit, there's an about, and on that's our mission, our vision, what we believe, our leadership, and contact. Okay? So, and so you would go there. So now you have a place to send people if they want to know about it. Also, what's nice about this website, if you see on top, there's a little F there. That looks like the Facebook app. Hit that. That goes to our Facebook page. If you hit the YouTube look uh, icon, that goes to our YouTube page. And so you can go back and see our past services that have been recorded. That's our archive. Okay? So you can send people to that. Now, amen, I've asked Sister Hannah. She's going to be over overseeing our, our website. So you're going to want to check back every so often because if I know anything about her, she's going to be changing it. Amen. And uh, it's only going to get better. But we got to have a starting place. And i got news for you. I've been working on this for a year and a half. I give it to her for one week, and we got it up and running. So that's the reason why. Amen. So you, you, you give her the credit because I've been trying this, and the technology and the, and the terminology is beyond my bald-headed cranium, amen, so, uh, but just, we need something, I, I felt that, I've been feeling that for quite a while, and we tried and tried to do it all different ways, and finally we came across this, and this is something that we uh, can control, and we can change, and if you go through there, and you know, I'm not asking you, you know, to do a deep down pursuit of it, but but if there's something on there that you might say, hey, you know, might want to look at this or something, I'm sure that she would be open to hear your suggestions on that. But we want to have something that we can send people to. All right? Also, we are going to be uh, um, making available these little pa pamphlets here into his marvelous light. It's a home Bible study. All right? I do have a few of them. But what's unique about this Bible study is you can go online, okay, and you can have them go online, and you can teach them a Bible study online, and it's the same Bible studies I have in my hand, okay? So we do have a few of these, and this is all going to be under Brother Brother Griffin. This is all going to be going, so if you're looking for this or want questions about Into His Marvelous Light, I want you to go to Brother Griffin. I don't know if today's sunny. I know, but we're passing some vision. Is that all right? Okay. In fact, um, and so if you're, if you're interested, it, or if you don't want to teach this, I suggest this. It's easy. It only takes a few moments. It's based on questions and, and that type of thing. So it's a little easier. Now, if you find somebody that you really want to take about through the Bible and do a big, long 12, 13, 14 week Bible study, Brother Griffith is also very familiar with those in, uh, such as I kind of push you exploring God's Word, okay, if you want to do that, and those, you can take those questions to Brother Griffith, and you can help me with those, but I believe, amen, there are, there's much fruit, what do I mean by, by that, there's many souls that God wants to bring into His kingdom at this time, and Brother Caleb, I know, amen, you mentioned that we haven't, but we haven't seen, amen, the depth, I agree, but we have seen revival come to our church. Amen. Brother David's one of them. He's here today. Amen. 
we see God reach out of nowhere, bring some people in. And I believe that is just the, the, the we call it the drop in the bucket, amen? The drop in a bucket compared to what God wants to do through this church. So we have to be prepared. And I know Thursday night come, um, uh, I'm going to cast some more vision on Thursday night. We're going to talk about the man of peace. And so you're going to want to be here as we talk about the man of peace and give some direction on how God wants to do revival. Amen. We are a unique church. There's probably other ones, amen, that, that are kind of like us, but, but we're unique in that we reach, right now we have five cities represented in our congregation. That's pretty, that, 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 I'm like, God, you know, I'm trying to reach saved. No, God says, I am trying to broaden your, your, your sanctuary because there's much soul in this area. Amen. And, and I don't, you know, uh, uh, so I want to be open. And I love what Brother Caleb led us in prayer today. Amen. I want to be open to God's vision, not my vision. Because my vision is little. God's vision is big. Amen. And I want to be involved in God's vision. In fact, in just an example of what God wants to do and what God is doing in our church. I don't, go ahead, look around. Amen. Look at each other, kind of smile at each other. Amen. We're, we're the church. This is us. And it is so awesome what God has done with us. I gave you a goal, $10,000 for Christmas this summer. Look around. Who's got $10,000 in their bank? I don't, you don't raise your hand because I'm kidding. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, not very many of us. And I know, I know what my spirit said. Not God's spirit, but I know what my spirit said. God, can't we just take a year off? Because we've been doing good in this church, in our, in our offerings. We are, we are tremendous. I mean, you guys have been just yielding, yielding and yielding to God. And God, God, you know, every once in a while, it's just facing, isn't it? But God said, no, I want you to challenge your people. Because when God challenges us, and we step to the side, then God opens bigger horizons. God opens bigger doors. And so our, our goal was $10,000. And and I told Sister Sarah, this is, you know, du double meaning. The star is putting the star on our tree today. Amen. So uh, uh, we, we placed the star on the tree today. Why? Because this is what we have raised this year. $12,098.61. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Would you stand right now and give God some, some praise right now? Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done through us. Thank you, Lord, for what you have multiplied among us. Thank you for trusting us to give. Thank you, Lord God, for trusting us to love your, your vision as much as you love your vision, God. We give you the praise and we give you the glory today. We magnify your name today. Praise God. Praise God. It's because of this that I believe, amen, that God is fixing to really unroll some miracles among us. He already has, and I don't know about you, but when you get a little bit of the taste of what God can do, it kind of makes you hungry for more. And that's what I think God's done among us in this last two months, three months, is just giving us a taste of what he can do because there's more that he wants to do. But we got to be hungry. we got to be thirsty for it. And I don't know about you, but I'm getting hungry. I'm getting thirsty for God to do some awesome things. Amen. And I know, amen, and I, and I speak this, amen, God has tested this church. And I know we are not going to do it for our own glory. Because if we would have, if, if that was in us, then we would already be disbanded and, and, and just done. But because God has tested us through the trials and the tests and the difficulties, we've been quick to give him glory. God's going to honor this church. God's going to honor your faith. God's going to honor you individually. Thank you, church. 
for meeting the challenge. Thank you for stepping up, doing your part. God's got great things in store. Amen. So please be here if you can Thursday night as, as we unroll some, some more vision. And, and I'm stepping on my son's toes a little bit. But there is a business meeting, which also will be coming up a week from this Thursday, the 23rd of February. We have to do that because of laws, IRS requirements. But really, I we use this as vision counseling. Amen. So we got some more things coming at you. Amen. Because we're ready what God can do. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. And, and you're going to probably sit down for a cu- couple minutes, but but Brother Chanty is coming at this time with announcements and closing up the offering. Praise the Lord, everybody.
son, amen, praise God, amen, that I might not lose my voice, and I may not yell at you as much, amen, praise God, amen. If you have your Bible, we're going to turn to Acts, the fifth chapter, who knew, amen, praise God, if you've been following us for very long, you would know, amen, Acts 5, all right, he's got it marked in his Bible, all right, Brother Juan, amen. Acts 5, we're going to take a verse here, amen, 24, verse 24, Acts 5, 24. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of Whereunto this would grow. They doubted of them. The them is the apostolic, the apostles, the apostolic church. Whereunto this would grow. They doubted that it would grow. I want to preach to you from the title today. As the world doubts, God acts. As the wor- world doubts, God acts. Lord, we love you today. We praise you today. We magnify you today. We know that you are well able, that you are sovereign supreme, and that you are working in this hour, that you are working in this earth, that you are working among the hearts of people, men, women, boys, and girls, God. And we're asking you, Lord, to continue your work, God, and lead us to them, that we might, God, come in contact with them, that we might help them find you in a greater way, we pray. Jesus, we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. You may be seated for the next couple minutes. Amen. As the world doubts, God acts. When darkness was upon the face of the deep, God said, let there be light, and there was light. When evil was in the heart of man continually, God searched for a man called Noah, who found grace in the eyes of the Lord. When two cities were, was, were very grievous unto the Lord, God heard the prayer of Abraham. When the leadership of Israel defied God, rejected God, God sought out a little boy that was a shepherd boy to lead his people. When Nineveh, Nineveh's wickedness came up before God, Though it was the long way around, God sent a prophet called Jonah. And the city repented and turned to God. When Roman rule was stamping out the Jewish faith, God came as a babe in a manger to bring the people back to truth and righteousness. When the universal church was slaying the followers of God, God birthed a new nation. United States of America to be a city set on a hill that the world would know of its light. When the world doubts that God can do anything about it, God acts. As we look into our chapter and preceding our chapter of the book of Acts, if you go back to the fourth chapter where we preached from last week about the precious name of Jesus. For there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That there is not a coincidence, it's not by accident, but the the proclamation of being baptized by calling upon the name of the Lord is a commandment of God because that is the only way sins are removed. That is the only way sins find remission. That is the only way that you can be washed have your sins washed away is being baptized in the precious name of Jesus. And as that was declared through and witnessed of uh, by the healing of the lame man and the, uh, the apostles responded to it, there was a great move of God and there was a great prayer that was prayed in Acts the fourth chapter. I'm not trying to go back to four, but I'm trying to set a, 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 a foundation here today and and they begin to pray and really called upon the Lord to give them boldness. We find that in the verse 34 of chapter 4, 
neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of things of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And, and Joseph, who, uh, uh, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, uh, and of the country of Cyprus, having land sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. That ends chapter 4. And it brought in a great feeling among the people of God. And so, People begin to sell what they had and bring the money and, and lay them at, at the at the apostles' feet and and uh, and and they begin to see the goodness of God and, and the power of God and and, uh, and and so everybody kind of falls into that because that was the end thing. What we find in the opening of chapter five, a young man. I say young. I think he was young. And, his name was Ananias and his wife, Sapphira. Following what others were doing, sold a possession. What that possession was, I, I don't know. The Bible's not real clear on it, but they sold a possession. And they brought from it, and as they were bringing it to the apostles, they had decided, we're going to tell them that sold for so much, and we're going to keep back part of it. They brought it to the apostles. And as you read there, right away, Peter is not caught off guard. Peter is aware of what took place. And he said, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of land? And as he mentioned this and as he declared this to them, he brought something. And I just, I'm going to just touch this and move on. It's not, I'm just trying to set a foundation today, I, right, right now. So... So don't, I'm, we're going to get back as the world doubts God actually. We're going to get back to that for here in a moment. But I'm just letting you know what took place here. Here was a, a couple declaring that they were doing something that they really were not doing. And the, and the leadership of that day recognized it. But I, I do want to point out one thing. Listen to verse 4. Because really, this is some mindset of our world, right, the Christian world right now. We need to sell everything. If you own something, shame on you. You shouldn't own anything. I don't need an amen, but that's what's going on right now in our Christian world, is that if you own anything, shame on you. You should sell it and give it to the poor. You should sell it and give it to the government. You should sell it and give it to other people. You should not own stuff. Because that's a shame on you. And that concept comes not from the Word of God. And I'm going to point out here in a second and verify it for you. That does not come from the Word of God. That comes from the heart of socialistic men. Communistic thinking. That's where, the, And that socialistic thinking and communistic thinking does not come from the heart of God. It comes from the heart of man because man was to set himself up as God and he is feeling is that you don't deserve to own anything because you don't know how to take care of it. You give everything to me and I'll take care of it for you because I know better than you do. And that is a, 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 a teaching right now that's trying to evade America, that's trying to evade you, that's trying to evade our teenagers, that's trying to evade the, the, the young people of our, of our nation. And, and I just want to take a moment in my message today to verify because right here I'm going to show you is that is not the plan of God. Yes, they were selling things because God moved upon them and their passion and their love drove them to sell and they gave. Look what we did. $12,000. Why? Because our passion is to start new churches. Our passion is to help the kingdom of God. And that's where it should be because we want to help the kingdom of God. It wasn't that they came with what they had. Ananias and Sapphira, whatever number they brought, that wasn't the issue. Peter didn't care how much they brought. That wasn't the issue. The issue is they were trying to deceive God and trying to make out something that it wasn't really theirs. In fact, he goes on to say this, and this is really hit the, the kind of the nail on the head when it comes to socialism and, and, and communism. Uh, and that is, he said in verse 4, whilst it remained, was it not thine own? After it was sold, was it not in thine own power? 
In other words, when you owned it and you sold it, whatever you got from it was yours. You could do whatever you wanted with it. You were at liberty, at free to do whatever you want because it was yours. And I know in the Christian heart, everything I have is God's. I understand that. But here, even Peter's letting you know, we do own some things. And it's all right to own some things. It's okay to own a nice car. It's okay to own a nice home. It's okay to maybe have a, a speedboat if you're into speedboats or golf clubs or, or whatever. And I'm going to get myself in trouble. Amen. But it's all right to own some things as you understand, amen, that they're not the God of your life. America, it's okay to own some property. It's okay to, to build a nice home. It's okay in the eyes of God. You're not going against God. In fact, uh, the re one reason why, man, I'm preaching now, and I didn't expect to preach this long. I told you for a moment I was going to stay on this, but I feel like preaching for a moment. I believe God's going to bless you, and when God blesses you, it's not wrong to have some good things. It's not wrong to have some nice things, uh, amen, because God wants his people to be blessed. And when people look upon you, amen, you just be quick to give God the glory because you understand that my blessings come from the master. My blessings come from the throne of heaven, and Jesus loves me, and Jesus wants to bless me. Don't you dare get caught up in this spirit, amen, of the Antichrist that's trying to rob God's people of blessings, trying to make you feel bad because you've been blessed of God, trying to make you uh, uh, be upset with yourself because you've got some blessings that other people don't have. I've got blessings because I'm a child of God. Solomon was wealthy, billionaire in our world. But he also built a billion-dollar church for the glory of God. He had an understanding. You can go through Scripture. Abraham, by many theologians, believe that Abraham could have been the richest man on earth while he lived. Abraham. I could go right through and name men. Job. Job was wealthy. And even when he had everything to taken from him, because his attitude was right, after God corrected it a little bit, amen, and he got right with, in the eyes of God, amen, and got rid of his self-righteousness, God blessed him double what he had before. It's not wrong to have stuff. I want this church to understand that. Don't you dare let this world dictate to you and make you feel bad because you own stuff that's nice. Because God wants to bless you. God wants, that's one way God to prove to this world that his blessing's upon you. Does that mean then, Pastor, if I don't got any nice stuff that God's not blessing me? No, that just means, uh, amen, you just keep on living for God. You keep being faithful, and God will open doors for blessings to flow in your life. But let's not let this spirit of socialism, amen, come into the church. Anytime a man, anytime... The only one that can tell you to go sell something and give it all to God is God. Beware. And I know I'm pastor. And I know I'm 54. Amen. Praise God. And I won't be here forever. Amen. If God tarries for 50 years, I'm not going to be here. I'm just going to let you know right now. I don't plan on living. To, well, I should shut up about that. I don't know how long God will make me live. Amen. But but because I just dawned on me, that's only 104, and there's people living 104, so I better be careful what I say. Amen. But I want you to understand, amen, if any man stands in the pulpit and demands you to, to go sell everything you had, and that and, and there's not no confirmation from God, you beware. You beware. Because that the, the only one that has the right to do that is Jesus Christ. And he said at one time to, to one man, a rich man, because he understood the heart of the rich man. And that rich man refused to do it because he had money. And his, that was his thing. And, and, and boy, I, I'm telling you, I, God help me. I got so much, Lord, this is not what I wanted to preach today. But for, for whatever reason, I'm, I, I'm letting you know, amen. We need to understand it. Amen. That we the love of money. It's not money. It's the love of money. That's the root of all evil. Don't let the devil twist that. Well, I I, I don't can't 
you know, I, I, I can't have money because that, that's the root of all evil. Money is not, it's the love of money. Our problem in America, man, I'm just, can't, can't you follow me wherever I go? Amen. But the problem in America right now in our politics is not, it's, it's not the money, it's the love of the greed of money and the greed of power. Because they want to rule over people and not let the people rule over them. But I got news for you. America, we've been known as we the people. Right. Amen. It's our nation. It's our government. Amen. We have the right to, to vote down and vote up whoever we desire. It's not up to them. And I know there's a lot of crooked things going on. But I know a God of justice today. I know a God that sees all. I know a God that's going to answer his people. Amen. Because his people are precious in his sight. Amen. And he's going to perform the miraculous. And he's going to perform the impossible. Right now, what you're seeing, I believe. Amen. I believe that what we're seeing in America right now is the fact, amen, that we're seeing God set up a world to unleash his glory and his presence and his, and, and, and his goodness upon them. I believe, amen, that God is set, allowing the world to set up, set up the, 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 set the stage for God to come through in a powerful way. One of the reasons why I believe this, and I have no idea where I'm at in my notes, but one of the reasons why I believe this, amen, is because that's what he did at Calvary. He let the Romans do whatever the Romans wanted. Whatever, the Romans thought, you know, they were in charge, and he just let them believe whatever they wanted to believe. He let the, sad, the, the, the Sanhedrin do whatever it wanted to do. He let them set the stage. In fact, the word of God later on declared, if the devil had known what would have taken place at Calvary, he would have never have crucified Jesus Christ. Amen. With that as a backdrop, I believe, amen, and that is the greatest, the greatest happening in our world, amen, to this point is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I believe that completely, amen. But second uh, or third on the list, uh, amen, praise God, I believe in end-time revival. I believe that God's going to move powerfully in these last days. Uh, I believe that God's allowing everything to set it up, uh, amen. Governments uh, throughout the world think that they are in charge and think they're getting away with murder and getting literally, in some cases, uh, amen, but getting away with whatever, what they, whatever they think they want to do. They, there's no power on earth uh, that can stop them but I've come to a pulpit today to declare you when the world begins to doubt the church when the world begins to doubt the power and the might of our creating God amen then God's gonna move and then God's gonna operate and then God's gonna touch and then God's gonna minister and it's gonna show people who truly is the great one and that's what we're seeing being done that's what we're seeing being done Amen. The world, they said, amen, that the high priest, the captain of the temple, the chief priest, when they heard the workings of God, when they heard the developments of the apostles, amen, they doubted. Oh, there's nothing going to happen. They can't do much. They doubted the power of God. But I have to tell you this. In Acts, the fifth chapter, Verse 12, look what happened when they began to doubt God and doubt the growth of the church. Amen. And just figure the church couldn't go anywhere. Just as right now in America, they're doubting the church. They're doubting that the church can do anything. Amen. They're doubting that the church has any power or authority. Amen. But you hear this in verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were wrought among the people. And they were with all with one accord in Solomon's porch. And of the dirt, no man joined himself to them, but the people magnified them. And believers were added to the Lord multitudes, both of men and women. Here's the leadership of their day saying there's no way. But God began to move. God began to multiply. God began to do miracles. God began to do signs and wonders. Amen. And when the people began to see them wrought among them, they turned to God. Amen. And began to become a believer. Amen. Begin to follow God. They didn't stop there. And so much. How much did they believe in the working of God? They brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter 
passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem. Now, can I stop there for just, a, well, I say that, and then I preach for about 10 minutes. But, but can I just tell you, amen, as I stood right over there, as we were worshiping God today, amen, this portion of Scripture began to play back into my mind. Over and over and over, they came also a multitude. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about. Amen. Out of the cities round about. Amen. And I, I, you know, I preached every city needs a church. Amen. But I tell you what, what was happening in Jerusalem began to reach all the way around all sorts of cities around that. That, 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 that move of God. And they begin to come into that presence of God. They begin to come into that, into that miraculous visitation of God. Amen. Bringing sick folks. Uh, they that were vexed with unclean spirits. Uh, and listen to this. And they were healed. Every one of them were healed. I'm tired of being 10% right. I'm tired of 15% accuracy. I'm ready for 90%. I'm ready for 95%. I'm ready for 100%. People being healed, people being delivered, people being set free. Because that's how God does it. That's how God wants to do it in this hour. God wants to be 100% on target. And he's going to do it, church. Amen. Cities. Amen. People from all the cities. Amen. That's why I mentioned we represent five cities right here in this congregation. Amen. Praise God. Why? Because God's fixing to do something. God is fixing to unload. God is fixing to release. Uh, did I not preach a few months ago, years ago, that he's going to release an arrow? Hey, Amen. God is fixing to release an arrow, God's arrow. And the people that see the arrow of God are going to recognize the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God. And they're going to turn to God in this hour. Church, it ain't time to be we're worried. It ain't time, amen, to be anxious. It's time to be full of faith. It's time, amen, to be fully committed and say, yes, Lord, where you lead, I will follow. Lord, what door you open, I will go through. God, I will step out on the limb and not worry because you are with me. God, because this is the hour of the church. This is the hour of the church. Not only as you see, and I've read here from Acts 5, what God was doing. When they doubted him, what God began to do. Not only was that involved with them, but notice also, and we read in, later in Acts about the angel coming to Peter and delivering Peter. And we always oh, shout, and I think that Acts 12, and we'll talk about it when we get there. But, but you know what? That wasn't the first time. It happened right here. Acts 5, 18, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in, in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord, by night, opened the prison doors, brought them forth and said, Go, stand in the temple to the people. Uh, go, stand, go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. I think that's so cool how they said the words of this life. What life? The Christian life. The God-given life. The Jesus life. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And when they had seen this, amen, many turned to him. Amen. But the leaders doubted them. They doubted that this would grow. That this would become anything important. That this would become anything that would be God-driven. Dr many Meaning the leaders of the day doubted that this apostolic movement was, gonna, was going to turn into anything. So I come to you today, kind of preach this already a little bit, but I do want to uh, make a few comments here today. Wickedness seems to be exploding upon the American culture. Entertainment, sports, music, education, and politics. Many are calling it a culture revolution, meaning that the American culture is being changed. This thought promotes the idea that the American culture that once upheld family values, biblical morals, and faith in God is being changed into the polar opposite to the point that our culture now rejects these concrete truths. 
as I see and hear the leadership of our country support and embrace this culture revolution of America, I choose to turn to a book that the creator of all things declared was forever settled in heaven. Three of the four gospels declare that the heaven and earth may pass away, but my words, the words of God will not pass away. Therefore, I declare to you today, in the face of human reasoning, in the face of, uh, of uh, worldly uh, uh, doubt and ungodliness, I preach to you that I believe that God is fixing to exalt himself in these last days, uh, that God is fixing to unleash his glory and power as he promised, for he declared in Acts the second chapter, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Isaiah declared in Isaiah 60, but the Lord shall rise up upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Zechariah 14 declares, at the evening time, it will be light. There shall be light. Peter declared that ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him that hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in times past were not a people, but now are the people of God, and have not obtained, which could not obtain mercy, but now obtain mercy. Matthew would write later, amen, as he looked back over the life of Christ, he would remember a time when Peter and the apostles would come and get, Jesus would come before them, asking them, whom do you say that I am? And they would begin to say, some say Jeremiah, some say he's, uh, uh, Ezekiel, and I mean, they list a bunch of the prophets, uh, amen. But he said, who do you say that I am? And Peter declared boldly, I don't know that he really understood it at that moment, but he declared boldly, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus spake unto him in verse 18 of Matthew 16, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Church, what you're seeing right now is the gates of hell trying to prevail. What you're, trying, what you're seeing right now is the agenda of the wicked, amen, being pushed in our educational systems, in our homes, amen, in our politics, and they're trying to take down the church. But I've got news for you today. I believe in the creating God. I believe in the God of Scripture. I believe in the God that has all power in heaven and in earth. And he said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. It ain't time to doubt. It ain't time to grow weary. It ain't time to be anxious. But it's time to rekindle our faith. It's the time to re rekindle our hope and place it in Jesus Christ. When I see the doubt beginning to rise, that there is nothing that God can do about the perversion, wickedness, and ill reverence of godliness in our nation, something begins to rise up in my spirit saying, you just wait and see. You just wait and see the great God of heaven by whose words and hands have made all that we see chose to come to you and me, not just as a babe in a manger, but the Lamb of God being hung on a tree that the works of the devil that seem to be taking over our world today were destroyed as Jesus Christ, it is finished. Yes, I strongly preach to you today, Jesus is not done yet. Jesus is not finished yet. Jesus has not written off this world yet. Amen. But I believe as the night becomes darker and darker, Jesus again setting the stage for his next great move against the kingdom of darkness. Just as the leaders of the apostolic day could not stamp out, amen, uh, the outpouring of God's glory and truth, the leaders of our day will not be able to close down the revival of God's glory. Amen. The leaders of the day will not be able to close down the revival of God's glory. It's time to lift up your eyes and see. It's time to lift up your heads and believe. It's time to put our faith in Jesus Christ. Healing, signs, wonders, total deliverance, receiving of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance, being baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins is going to be, be preached all through our nation. And I've got news for you. It's going to be received by masses of people. There is no way you can convince this little old man 
in front of you today that God did better things and greater things at the beginning than he's going to do in the ending. God don't work that way. I've got a Bible, amen, that declares the works of God, and God always gets better. World gets worse. I know. I got news for you. And I love my children. But this is also on me. We're not as wise and we're not as intelligent as our grandfathers. Don't believe me? Go find a test that they took in eight, eighth grade back in the 19, early 1900s. You can't pass it. And I'm not trying to be ugly today. But human reasoning is getting less and less. Creation is getting worse and worse because that's what happens, amen, in a sin-filled world. But God gets better and better and better and better and better as he continues to reveal his glory, as he continues to reveal his greatness, amen, things are better and better. I'm telling you, amen, the days of the apostles was much more powerful and anointed of God than the days of Moses. I, I, I guarantee you Peter is glad, amen, that he was on the day of Pentecost versus being on the day of Mount Sinai and, and the giving of the law. God gets better as he reveals himself more and more and more. And I've got news for you. He isn't done yet. He's not done yet. We're going to see more and more of the glory of God as we see that day approach. And then one of these days, we're going to see all God is because we're going to be able to behold him. Amen. We're going to be able to see him face to face. Praise God as we worship him around the throne of the Most High. And what a day that's going to be. Praise God. Amen. And we're looking forward to that day. And that day is fastly approaching. They're going to be received by masses of people. New life, it is not time to begin to expect. I mean, it is time, excuse me, I'm glad that not's there, praise, he's not there, amen. It is time to begin to expect it to happen in your family, in your friends, in your workplace, and in your neighborhoods. The common, ordinary people of our world will wake up to the fact that this world is not the answer. That the wisdom, the intellect, that the, the insights of the world around us is not the answer. But Jesus alone has always been and will always be the answer. If you would stand with me today. Because I want to remind you of the words of Peter and the apostles in Acts 5. They said this, when challenged by their leadership to quit preaching, quit believing, quit Quit hoping in this message of Christ. They said it this way. We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him. As our world doubts, God acts. As our world doubts, our God acts. So as we bring this to a close, and I feel very strongly that I have preached against a, a spirit of our age, can I bring it down a little closer to us here today? Because I know you've come today. There's somebody right now, you need God to act in your personal life. There is somebody here today that needs God to act in your behalf. There is somebody within the sound of my voice today that faced such an impossibility, such a mountain, such hopelessness, and you need a divine touch, a divine reach, a divine move of a God that acts. If you're here today, I invite you to open your heart. One thing God will not throw aside, and that is a broken and contrite heart. 
if you would just open up your heart right now and be honest with God. But it doesn't sound very pretty, Pastor, what I feel like I need to say. Say it to God right now. God's got big shoulders. He can take it. He just wants you to be honest. Because in your honesty, in your devotion, and in your obedience, God can do the miraculous. God can do the impossible. Would you right now? The altars are open for whomsoever will. The God that I'm preaching about is not just a God that's going to move around the world, but he's a God that wants to move in your family. He's a God that wants to move in your neighborhood. He's a God that wants to move in your finances. He's a God that wants to move right where you live because he cares, Brother Griffith. He cares. He cares. He cares. He cares that much. Oh, would you come and surrender it to him? Would you come and call on him? Would you go ahead? Amen. Praise God. And maybe it's direction. Maybe it's wisdom. Maybe it's something that only God can do. And and you don't want to take a step without God's guidance. Would you come to the front today and ask the Lord to give you wisdom? Would you come to the front today and ask for God to give you direction? Would you come to the front today and ask the Lord to bring you healing? Because that's what he wants to do. The world right now wants you to doubt. The world right now wants you to think God don't care about you. The world right now wants you to begin to doubt that everything I preached about today is impossible. That was for the days of the apostles. I've got word for you right now that's alive from the pit of hell. God's got blessing for you. God wants to multiply his blessing upon you. God's got things in your in store for you that would blow your mind right now if he let it be unfolded all at once because God loves you. God cares about you. God's got that better job. God's got that more increased, amen, monthly increase of finances for you because he cares for you. Don't let doubt rob you. Don't let doubt rob you. Don't you dare let doubt rob you of your blessing. Don't let doubt rob you of your healing. Don't let doubt rob you of your backsitting loved ones. Don't let doubt put a foothold in you. You, you, you. you take authority over it right now. In Jesus' name, I take authority over the spirit of doubt. I take authority over the spirit of doubt. That de- deceitful lie that's speaking to my brother, that's speaking to my sister right now. I take authority over that in the name of Jesus. Lord, and I release faith in their heart. I release faith right now. You are a God that can do anything. You're a God.